Let's see it. Let's see what Ben opened. Welcome back to Team Draft Super League. Uh, we've got Ben Stark ready to draft. Yeah, um, if we could get him to make the cards bigger, that'd be great. Yeah, Ben is uh, Ben's making it hard on us. Perhaps forgetting our age. So he's opened Hour of Devastation. Uh, right? It's Hour of Revelation. No, the other, the other hour. What's it called? Hour of Revelation, I believe. Uh, it's the white one. It's Planar Cleansing, right? Planar Cleansing. Yes, with the, if there are 10 or more permanents, you can pay it play it for just triple white, which that might come up in a game of limited. <laughs> it's possible. But it looks like he's got that little 2-2 guy. There we go. Yeah. Little 2-2 guy who can ramp you in a pinch. Or maybe not even in a pinch. Maybe that's his, uh, his thing. Something tender. I don't remember what he's called. Uh, hope tender. Hope tender. Wow. That's, that's ambitious. Tendering hope. Um, so this pack has none of the premium commons. Um, so those are not really a big pull. What do you think? The rare is kind of a tough one to start with. I, this is not a – I feel like draft formats have we're, – we're well past the types of draft formats where you can draft a six casting cost Wrath of God and then kind of slow play and get your opponent with it just because you can't really afford a slow, slow play. Uh, I, I still think that that card's pretty good. Uh, so Ben picked Consign to – Memory, I think, or something. Right. Consigned as something. That's a bounce spell plus a mind rot, correct? Yeah, it's disperse slash mind rot, which I think that was definitely one of the three best cards. Yeah, I, I agree. probably would have taken the white rare to start, but Hope Tender's also strong. Yeah, Hope Tender's good. Unsummon, I know people like Unsummon in, in the blue red archetype in particular. Yeah. But, um, ben kind of took an Unsummon with a bonus, so the extra mana is probably. You know, will occasionally hurt you in a tempo-based format, but six man should be even less tempo-based. So, what are we thinking here? Uh, this is. It looks like he's got Quarry Beetle selected. He's Unquenchable Thirst is a card that's impressed me. It's uh, kind of a claustrophobia if you have a desert. Which... Right now, how how much do you care about deserts once you have that card? Are you happy to have that in your deck without a desert? Uh, I think you you. It's certainly still playable without a desert, but I I. I Tend to want to have three or four deserts in most of my decks, so I like to plan for that. Oh, he's picked Hour of Eternity, which is a powerful wow. spell for sure, but triple blue. It's so expensive. It, 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 if you can get to seven mana, you can do some pretty good things with that card. All right, All right. so here's another crazy expensive rare. Yeah, that rare, I, I don't think anyone's going to put that in their deck. It's, it's yeah. too hard to make work. Um. So there's still, there's not, I guess all, the, there have been two commons taken out of this pack. And yeah, the, the two blue cards are both playable if Ben just wants to stay on blue. Um, the best non-blue cards are probably Sandblast. Um, the Ceridon is good and it's kind of a decent five drop. These are all kind of... Nothing I'm excited about. Is he taking this split card? That surprises me. That card doesn't seem particularly good in an unfocused kind of deck. So that is a sorcery speed plus X plus X for, for how many creatures you have, correct? Yeah, it gives trample. And then uh, the backside, I don't even remember what it does. Tap two backside. creatures. Wow. So this is, I, I think it's interesting how like we're having such trouble talking about these packs just because nothing has really stood out. And especially because... Ben's kind of started with such strange cards. There's no, yeah. I don't really know what archetype these are these are pulling him towards, except blue cards. Is, is kind of how I felt. So I'm, I'm a little surprised he didn't just take one of the two blue cards because I don't see the point of deviating. But I guess he's scared of that split card for some reason. Uh, I I can't imagine that was a defensive draft. He, he's got to be planning to use it. So okay. here he picked up a good creature for his deck. He, he's definitely based blue. And you have to think he's going to be happy to see this consign here, given that he first picked it right out of a pack that where he had other options. There's also I, um, the sting there, the uh, 
destroy I'm not targets. About the sting. I, I, you need a very specific black deck, I think, for that to be a good card. Well, yeah. blue often has utility has some utility creatures in this set um, that you don't mind putting minus one minus one counters on, but and he does is looking towards blue black. What, is that that demon that's X for how many cards in your graveyard? Yeah, that card's pretty bad. I don't think yeah. we're going to see him pick that. He he's got another one of these split cards here, which he you might much really like it. He's, he's, I, I would I would think that the pick here would just be the desert. Well, the problem is that I don't know that he thinks he's a black deck, so taking an off-color desert is not very appealing. For what? Well, why? Why? <laughs> he's taking those split cards pretty high if he's not leaning towards being a black deck, but he took the... Uh... All right, I'm pretty confused here. i got to be honest. I'm not sure what to say. I you want to take over? You want to take over the expert line, Every time he gets a split card, it's like he's getting two picks. So oh! He gets, he's... <laughs> Now 10 cards deep in the draft, maybe, is what he's thinking. So the best card here is the uh, green Frontline Rebel and the Death Toucher. Um, so Harrier, Naga, and the something rat. I forget the guy. The start of that guy. Ru Ruin rat? Ru that might be it. Garbage rat? Yeah. All right, so now he's... I still don't understand these green-white split card picks. Yeah, I, I don't know what he's thinking with and those. They, they've, sort of, they've sort of inhibited my ability to analyze this draft because I don't really understand what happened. It's a sorcery speed giant growth, right? Yeah, if you are a green-white deck, I think it's a playable card. But right, I, but he took it after two blue cards. Yeah, I don't, didn't really understand those picks. All right, so You're, now I would, I would think he would just take the Thirst here. Yeah, I, I, I think Thirst is probably the best blue common and I, I would have happily picked it for the variety of points in this draft. That's another reason why I thought the Black Desert was draftable, just because it was likely that this, you know, a thirst would come back. But yeah, maybe I, not likely, but possible. It seems like Ben is planning on using the back half of Consign, which... I, I, I think that ability doesn't come up that often. It's just too expensive. The discard too? Yeah. Well, I think it comes up where you can use it as a removal spell. You bounce their thing into a turn, untap, and I mean, it doesn't come up all the yeah, time in, in every matchup. Games, Some matchups are fast, but I think most of the games are too fast for that kind of a play pattern to really happen. Uh, I agree, most, but you know, there's value there, and, and yeah. as we said earlier, these these games will probably be a little bit slower. Um, so now. There's the Cycling Desert, which I'd imagine will be the pick. So a lot of people have told me they like the Cycling 4-2. Just a good optionality on that creature. Is that a 2-drop? Wow. So that's late for a 2-drop. Yeah. You put that right in his deck. You see that? Yeah, but I think pretty much everybody agrees it's not that great. It, there weren't very many cards left in the pack when he took the... Yeah. I agree. It's hard what, to use. You, you need to... Discard a card or tap it, or is it sack a creature or tap it? Uh, I don't know. It has some drawback that's vaguely reminiscent of Lord of the Pit. Hmm. I like reminiscing about Lord of the Pit. Yeah. There is a very bad card. Gain for life, gaining life. Well, we're looking like some kind of. It's just tough for a deck like. It's tough for a blue black deck. You have to be expecting to use the backside of that split card because it takes a very specific blue blue black deck, especially in a six man draft, to be like an aggressive enough deck where you don't mind, where you care about tempo that much, you know? Well, I think that uh, honestly, it. In this format, if you wind up drafting a, a later game deck, having one or two bounce spells isn't that bad. Sure. Especially usually, if, you have if you get to the late game, your cards are going to be so much more powerful than your opponent's two drops that you can afford to be down a card. Right. And, and you probably have some sort of card advantage cards to make up for it. So what do you think is the pick here? There's a there's the uh, the removal spell that you said you did not like in decks like this. I, I think that... So it looks like Ben selected Desert's Hold, which is an arrest. 
the game, game life if you have the desert. For his deck, I think Unquenchable Thirst, which is the blue and one claustrophobia type card, would be a perfectly fine pick. I think he should have taken that. Yeah, he, I think he, he just, you know, we talked about this earlier, he likes to counter draft. Yeah, but it, that's weird. He, if Unquenchable Thirst winds up in one of his opponent's decks, it's almost the same card as Desert's Hold. That is that is correct. I agree with that. And it would have been in his deck 100% of the time. So that's Especially because there, there were quite a few deserts in that first pack. Yeah. So uh, at least based on one pack, there's not going to be a shortage of people who want those deserts to make those cards, you know, maximize those cards. So he's got a two drop, which is a, you know, this is kind of the, you know, one of the two drops are a little weaker in this set. So this two, two afflict guys is on the high end of, of what you get in our devastation. Yeah, um, the one three is also playable. What do you think of the one three that becomes unblockable if you cycle? It's pretty mediocre. I, I, it's not really clear to me why Ben has decided that he is a black deck. So I, I think that taking the blue guy is fine. Maybe looking to see if you want to be a, a different second color. Yeah, he almost could have just even taken the... I was actually surprised when he put the pacifism straight into his sideboard. But maybe yeah. he's just he, maybe he's just doing mental accounting differently than, than we might. But I, I agree with you. Like, it certainly doesn't have to be black. Oh, boy. Now it, that's Bantu's Last Reckoning. That's an interesting card. Yeah, I would definitely take that here. Yeah. I, I don't... I, I agree. Um, I think these cards are... I don't recall ever having is any drawback like this in Limited before. It's a very interesting drawback for Limited that if we haven't... I don't think anyone's really played many games where they need to evaluate. Well, I'm pretty sure you've played Limited when Echo existed. Sure. Which it's this is... Bit. Kind of like echo for your spells. Yeah, but if your guy, yeah, you're right. It is sort of like echo for your spells. I did have someone cast the five four for green green against me on the play today, and I had the unsummon. That was pretty sweet. Yeah, I I got unquenchable thirst on my opponent's five four that they played on turn two. That okay. I think that wrath is going to play really well with the two consigns that Ben has. Like, it, it does make the mind rod abilities a lot more relevant if you can kind of fall behind on board to empty out their hand and then wrath to catch back up. Yeah. So we've got another... Got a three casting cost counterspell that cycles. Um, got another desert. Cycling desert. We've got a two three that's an... You know, it's a two three for three. It's very similar to Hecma Sentinels. Um... And we've got a big cycler. Yeah, I would like to be able to take the desert here, but I'm, if I'm Ben, I'm kind of concerned that you're about halfway through the draft and he's only gotten nine playable cards. Oh, that, I think that mirror card's quite bad. I have no idea. Yeah, what I'm, not, I'm not sure how to use that card, um, especially in a deck. It doesn't seem like a very good deck for it either. Um, I mean, he, can, he can get a little bit of synergy with the mirror and the demon where if you have them both in play you can kind of dodge the drawback on the demon and convert the mirror into a demon but that's you, you'll, you'll die well before that really comes up so now he's just taking a cycler there's some decent red cards here but I think that we're going to see the point where he is only going to counter draft in severe circumstances, because he doesn't have a lot of cards, like you said. Um, man, yeah. no one wants these red two drops. Weak yeah. packs, and I know two drops are at a premium, and, and there's a lot of them. I think we're going to see him take this 05 cycling wall. Oh, yeah? you look. I've never seen that card in play. It's... Uh... On the lower end of playable, but yes, anything uh, anything cycling can be considered on the lower end of playable. Yeah, he just takes the best. Uh, does he so? That was uh, a hate guess, You could say that's the best card in the pack. And so nobody likes these unquenchable thirsts. Yeah, they really, really don't like them, right? Like it seems crazy not to take this one. 
Yeah, well, I mean, it just went around the table and maybe he thinks it's coming around the table again. I have no idea why he has that hostile desert in his pile of cards. Hmm. Well, this has been interesting. Uh, I'm glad we could bring our special brand of confused uh, analysis to this draft. Yeah, like, there are. he's not going to have many more opportunities to get cycling lands. He doesn't have strategic planning yet. Maybe, Maybe he could hope to get a Seeker of Insight in the next pack. Maybe that thing I said where Ben wasn't going to throw the draft to protect his Pro Tour secrets is false. Maybe that is what we're seeing. Like those, I'm still, the green-white split cards that he just took super early, put them straight in the sideboard, never thought about them again. That was very unusual. Yeah. All right, so what do you like, strategic planning or the 5-5 five, five cycler? <laughs> I think strategic planning is a better card, but I think Ben Steck's going to really struggle to win. So he probably just needs the 5-5 five, five hex proof. Strategic planning does also set up that Hour of Eternity, which he took really early. Right, so let's talk about Hour of Eternity. What exactly does that card do? So it essentially gives... You're essentially eternalizing things. So, it's like, but, it's, but it's XX, so it's 7 mana, just 2 four fours. Well, yeah, so for 5 mana, you eternalize one thing from your graveyard. For 7, you eternalize two things, which is generally a pretty good deal, but Ben just doesn't have very good targets for it right now. And he's got... He has shockingly few creatures, right? Yeah, and normally Hour of Eternity, to make it good, you want some amount of comes into play abilities or evasion, like small evasion creatures that when they come back as a 4-4, they're still going to have their abilities, so they're, it's going to be a good 4-4. Um, like, Ben can make a 4-4 Death Touch rat. <laughs> he can make... Um, so a Slither Blade would be key here. Well, he does not have a Slither Blade deck, so... He, well, does he? What, what would you call his deck? This deck is... It's a mess. I mean, this deck is this deck is just blue-black cards I drafted. This <laughs> is what they call this. Well, I still can't... I'm kind of shocked he didn't take those Thirsts, like you said. Um, yeah, I, th I think he would be in way better shape if that Desert's Hold in his sideboard was a Thirst... Yeah. It maybe like probably one of his opponents would have the the deserts hold in their deck, but, but that thirst came back. Yeah, but it's I mean it, somebody's got it in their pool. It might be it, it might be going in a different blue deck. Um so oh wait, that wasn't the thirst that tabled? Oh it, it did, but he didn't take it. He took right, it. I, oh, right, right, right. But he, but it's not like the counter draft even cost him the thirst. Yeah, yeah so, so four of the best six cards or so in this pack are all black. So Ben should be confident he's going to get something back. Um, he takes the Plague Belter over the Lord of the Accursed. Doesn't have a ton of zombie. Doesn't have enough zombies to justify the Lord over the Plague Belter, I guess. So it's fine. Yeah. He also has in his playable pile right now the one one Eternalized guy whose name I do not know. He is but called. I almost played him on one of my drafts. So now we've got a Core of the Broken Lands should be decent in this deck, and it's a pretty weak pack otherwise. We know there's at least one other black drafter because two of those stings are gone. Although those could have been counter drafted late. I kind of like so this is where Ben would normally counter draft a cast out. It so the fact that we're drafting with the new set really made it so hard to read what people around what colors people around him are in, yeah. just because everyone's card evaluations are so all over the place. So I guess he, he's going to counter draft because he, he wants to get rid of the best card. If I were him, though, honestly, I would take Cancel or Soul Stinger. He's just so low on playables. Would you consider just playing his white? The two, basically two pacifism effects? Probably he's going to wind up doing that, which I think it's going to be bad on his mana. It's definitely going to be bad. There's basically been no, you know, there were no the, no amulets um, to fix your mana. Wow, is that back-to-back -back bone picker? Yeah, so he's definitely... That's huge for him, just yeah. getting two quality cards back-to-back -back like that. Bone picker and... a good target for Hour of Eternity. <laughs> yes. 
I just don't see how he's going to live to cast Tower of Eternity. Well, he's going to block with his bone pickers. Yeah, I guess that's true. What did he, he just took sparring he took mummy? Sparring or? mummy? I would have taken painful lesson if I was him. He. I agree. If he gets in a slow, some sort of slow matchup, painful lesson is totally serviceable draw two. Yeah, or if he just wants to play less than 20 lands in his deck. <laughs> uh, he's going to have to play white. He's going to play 18 lands with the white cards. I think that's very likely. Yeah, he still doesn't even have enough cards to do that. Well, he'll figure it out. He has 18 spells right now. Yeah. And, like, some of them are really bad, like that new <laughs> mir Mirage Mirror. I... I, I gotta be honest, I've learned absolutely nothing from watching this, and I hope the people watching maybe learned. Yeah, hopefully we said at least one thing that was useful. And he's I, got I, the Apocalypse Demon in his pile still. <laughs> and I, he I has... the, the green-white split card threw me off so bad that my ability to analyze the draft really fell apart. Yeah. Like, I couldn't remember what he passed. It was like... Oh, so we, we at least learned that the second half of Consign is Consigned to Oblivion. Consigned to Oblivion. Yeah, so here's his opening pack. He's going to take Splendid Agony. I he think is, he loves that card. He is definitely going to take Splendid Agony. He just did a fist pump. Can't yeah. see it. He probably did. This three-color mana base is going to be rough on the Hour of Eternity. So Compelling Argument is excellent with that demon. Oh, you're just going to do it? Yourself? You just put like five cards in your graveyard, I guess. You know. But he might just take crab or something. He's probably going to take. Well, I think if he's going to take something like that. He should take the dune beetle. I think his curve. He could use another two drop. Although those creatures are just a lot worse in the afflict world. Yeah. I. I I think that block high toughness blockers are a little bit better, given that there's the exert stuff is so much less pushed than Hour of Devastation. That's true. Try, trying to block it, it's still you're you're kind of fighting against the way the cards were designed, but it's not as hopeless as it once was. Yeah, yeah. but when, when's the hostile desert moving to the sideboard? <laughs> Yeah, because I'll tell you what I'd rather have than that. A Plains. Do you take Soul Stinger or Cancel here? I think you got to take Soul Stinger. All right. He did. Yeah. There's a Slither Blade we were talking about. Was, I'm, so with Gift of Paradise still here in a, in a pack that was... I don't really remember. Those, those Bone Picker packs. Ben's picks were so obvious, I didn't even really look at what was in there. But uh, I'm surprised... You know, with the gift still there, it means no one's doing anything too crazy, I'm guessing. And he really just does not want to play with Painful Lesson. Uh, even if even if you don't like Painful Lesson main deck, you're going to have, wow, tor Tormenting Voice, a uh, Pantheon staple. Nobody likes yeah. that either. Um, even if you don't want to play P Painful Lesson main deck, there's going to be matchups where you just don't care about your life total. You know, in, in, in formats like this, it might only be 20% of your matchups or something. But as a sideboard, it's like a great sideboard card in the right in the right pairing. I, I, I would just play it in my main deck if I was Ben. I, I think his deck is so weak that he's just going to need to try to get ahead on cards to be able to compete. Yeah, especially because he's, he's you know, two of his strong stronger spells are the, are the are bounce spells. I mean, those were his early picks. Yeah, um, and he also has the Wrath, which... It, Cards like Painful Lesson are pretty good for setting up the Wrath, I think. Yeah. Um, so I guess we're going to get, hopefully get to see how he tries to build his deck in a second. Yeah. Uh, I'm, do you want to start a countdown for how long it takes for the Hostile Desert to get out of, out of his deck? Wow, that is, I, I can start. Uh, want me to set a timer? Yeah. I'm going to say, well, it, it's going to be rough because it could be out already. And we, we don't know it yet. Well, then we'll know. I, I just started a timer. So uh -huh. I, I teamed with Ben at uh, the, the team events for maybe the past six months. You guys won one. Yeah. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, and there was a surprising amount of times that Ben didn't know exactly what cards did. 
So I, I got to be honest. Doesn't when I saw does. when I saw him take the green white split card, I thought there was a chance he did not know what he did. But he hovered over that one and read it. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I that might be true. <laughs> what uh, what card did he not know what it did during your uh, team grand prix? Uh, we had. In Mexico, it, it really stood out where, I forget the name, there, there was this guy that searched for an assembly worker, or, or self-assembler, and like the three men of two, three. Two, three, that, sure, the copies. Yeah. Things. And he just kept putting those in the unplayable pile, and then I would pull them out, and they'd be like, why are we going to play a five mana four for? And I'd be like, it goes and gets the two, three, that's pretty good. Yeah. And eventually, <laughs> once he understood that those cards interacted we played them in the deck and they were good. It was just... Well, why Why memorize what cards do when you can always read them later? Oh, white cards are in. White cards are in. But the desert is not out. Yeah. What, is that, what does that card do? The hostile desert? Is that the land? The, command, the creature land? Yeah, you exile yeah. a land from your graveyard to make it a 3-4. Yeah, it's not even any player's graveyard. It's just your graveyard, right? Yeah. He has one cycling land, and he can cast Compelling Argument on himself. And he doesn't have a reason to play Deserts because he didn't take any of the Thirst, right? I believe he has one Thirst. Oh, he does have a Thirst. Could, like, it'd, be nice still... if, it'd be nice if he could make his deck larger and not have so much... <laughs> but, you know, maybe he just likes to have, have his space. He likes the comfort of it. So how many playables is that? Well, he's got cards there. He's got a deck. Yeah, What's, so right right now he's at twenty four spells, which is which is kind of where you want to be. Is that uh, three well, casting? If you're play three colors like this? I think you're going to play seventeen land. Like I agree. Maybe, he, maybe, honestly, even eighteen to make his yeah. Color. Well, that's what I thought when, when I saw that he. I thought he was going to be like you know eight seven three or something. Oh, did it move? It's gone. Two wow. two minutes and. Uh, about 37 seconds. Yeah. So not bad. I, don't, I guess we should have uh, made it. Now you can only just get that unquenchable thirst back that he, he missed. Yeah. Right, the so, demon is gone. The demon is gone. Wow. Is that yeah. the, mirror, the mirror thing is still in his pile of cards? I mean. Yeah. I suppose. It, so at this point, um, they're conf the teammates are allowed to confer with each other for deck building. So there's definitely some chance that Eric or Luis were like, what is that desert doing in your deck? Why aren't you playing your white cards? Do you even know what that deep does? That sort of thing. Now, Eric is your, has, Eric's been your third teammate along with Ben. Yeah. So, so he has a special insight into how Ben's process. Yeah. I, I'd like to see Ben get that supply caravan in his deck. I think at this point, if you're going to play white, like a, a lot of your cards are just not very good. I, th I think yeah, he's having, great with these cards are so right. tiny because Ben doesn't want to help us out. That I the free casting cost for artifact is that mirror thing, right? Yeah, that I mean, if he thinks his opponents are going to have a good card, yeah, it's not exactly you know phantasmal image, but I guess it can change every turn, right? Yeah, but it, it changes back at the end of the turn. To nothing. It doesn't... You don't get the first copy for free. You have to spend two mana a turn to keep it right. as whatever you want it to be. And if the thing that you want it to be goes away, you no longer have the ability to make it into that. Right. So it, it's really... It's not a very efficient card. No, I, I was surprised he took it, and I was, I'm surprised he's playing it, but maybe he needs a... He decided he kind of has to have some outs to get lucky using their creature against them. You'd yeah. love to be able to thirst their great creature and then turn your mirror into it every turn. Hey, those uh, desert's hold on it. Yeah, those bone pickers were yeah it, pickups. I'm kind of making fun of Ben's deck here. It, it, it was looking really grim going into the third pack, and then he hit, had a run of some pretty strong black, black packs. Yeah, I, he did. You know, it just goes back to those early picks where it seems like both packs one and two, he did early picks, which sort of hurt his deck and 
and don't really feel like did that much damage to the opponents. Yeah. Well, we have to... So we're going to go look at Kenji's deck build now, now that Ben has got on... on he's only playing two planes. What do you think of that? Uh, well, he's got the triple blue card in his deck, so... That... He doesn't, doesn't have a lot of options. Yeah, and he kind of has to, and the Wrath is double black. Yeah, and he's only playing 17 lands. I mean, which, even for a blue-black deck, he doesn't have a lot to do with excess lands. So he's playing that, he can externalize that one drop. Yeah, yeah. Is that what that card, what's that called? Externalize? Did I just make that up? Eternalize. Eternalize. I knew it wasn't, knew it wasn't right. So I think we're going to see Kenji's build. Um, this, this looks a much more focused deck. Yeah, the cards are larger, just, you know. Um, so Kenji's this, doing this thing where, I, I've seen him do this on the stream, he has non-basic lands, he's not put them in with his cards yet. It looks like he's got... I've started doing that myself. Three red deserts, and then he, he might play Cradle of the Accursed. Right. Um, well, he... See, he has, like, remember I was talking about how those red two drops were um, yeah. going so late? He's got so many twos, he doesn't even have it in his deck, which I I think is going to be a lot rarer. And, you know, obviously a, a vanilla grizzly bear is nothing great, but it's so easy to be short twos in, in this format, especially in the six-man. But, no, he, you know, he got there quite easily. Yeah. His two bounce spells, um, nice yes. little... Tempo based deck here, and he's got the sand strangler. Yeah, and he has two. He has two unquenchable thirsts. So presumably, the one that we kept wanting Ben to take that he never took is right. sitting in Kenji's deck right now with four deserts. Three yeah. to four deserts. Right. If I was Kenji, I would not play the Cradle of the Accursed just because he's got one drops in both of his colors. But he might play it. Uh, it's a seventeenth land though. Um, with, with that Sand Strangler, you just really don't want to miss on the Sand Strangler, you know? Yeah, that's fair. I mean, there aren't... He has spells he could be considering playing, like that cycling uh, counterspell, countervailing winds. It, that's perfectly serviceable. You could play that if you wanted. Uh, what, is the red, what is the red-blue split card? Reduce... Is that just reduce... Is that, is that a new one, or that's the old one? That is the new one, which I, I don't know the name, but what it does is the red half is a four mana instant that targets a spell on the stack. Oh, right. It deals damage equal to the converted mana cost to that spell's controller. I think you can target your own spells, not that you should ever do that. And then the blue thing is a three mana instant that's a fork. That's a strange one. What do you think about that card? I guess that he's just trying to he's just trying to kill people. He's gonna be happy if it's Slava Axe. But yeah, I, like, I think that that is a, it's definitely the kind of card that only works if you're ahead, but it's potentially pretty good. If, now, if does he have any prowess? The Ophidian thing has prowess, right? No. Well, no? So he has a the, the spell weaver something is a 2-1 prowess guy with afflict 2. Right. Um, I don't. Nimble obstructionist is the three one flash. Oh, sorry, it's okay, three cycling. Well, that's nice. Um, so he is playing the cradle of the accursed, which he has five cards that trigger off of desert. So that, yeah, I, that's I, understandable. I think if you're going to play seventeen land, I, I know you've always been a cradle hater. Um, yeah. But I've I've definitely liked it more than you in general, and also I think that these cards, I mean, they're just a lot better when you have the when you have the desert. Just a huge difference for those the Ceridons especially. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, one of the reasons I always hated the Cradle before was that you didn't get any benefit from it until you actually sacked it to get the zombie, and that was just it. it took so long to get to the point in the game where you were going to do that that the two two was almost always irrelevant. But in, in Kenji's deck, you know, if it if the Cradle's his fourth land and he plays a Sand Strangler and gets to trigger that, that is a huge difference. So it makes sense to think about playing it, at least, if you think you can get away with it with your mana. And it looks like Kenji can. Yeah. Okay. 
I have to say, Kenji's deck looks night and day better than Ben's. Oh yeah, like it looks like a real, it looks like a real deck. Yeah, but but I mean, I think that was that was somewhat predictable because there were red. It seemed like there were just red cards going late, and Ben got into two colors that didn't. Like you said, you weren't sure why it was black. He kind of got into two. Although to be fair, in the third pack, black did seem open. Yeah, but his initial color choices weren't really based off what was open or even based off opening great cards. Like he took, you know, consigned to oblivion, which is it's a playable card. It's fine, but it's obviously something you'd be sad to first pick. And then to commit to your colors off that based off very little. His, his first few packs were just very weak. One thing that was interesting was we did, it seemed like he was prioritizing the split cards just to get a lot of split cards. Yeah. And Kenji actually had just as many as he did, it looked like. Kenji had <laughs> so you're saying he got thoroughly dominated? Split. Yeah. Yeah, he lost both. I mean, if you only get a tie in the split cards and your deck is much worse, is there is there a yeah. third category where that he could have been defeated in, too? Or, yeah. I, I guess if they lose, that's the third category. So I think we're going to check out Marshall's draft. Oh. Oh, deck building is over. So I think, Andrew, we, we're done for the night, me and you. Yeah. So thanks, so, everybody. And I will talk to you later, Chris. Yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize on for us being a little confused, but I would blame Ben Stark. <laughs> yeah. And any complaints, direct them to Ben on Twitter. And definitely. And, and I'm sure he will defend his choices. You do not. He's not going to roll over. Yeah. So have fun. Have fun with it, everyone. And uh, we'll be back after this. Looking for a challenge? Magic Online offers monthly limited and constructed events, which lead to the yearly Magic Online Championship. Download Magic Online at mtgo.com and start earning the points you need to enter. Check out Hour of Devastation Booster Draft Leagues on Magic Online. Draft anytime, play anytime. Available now. For more information, visit mtgo.com. Represent your country at the World Magic Cup at national events. This September, you can compete against your country's best players for the title of national champion. You need Planeswalker points to participate, so keep playing in local events to qualify. Learn about qualifying for nationals at magic.wizards.com nationals.